still on the topic of uh, pH, lower in pH. So I started an experiment. Um, what I'm doing is I'm boiling my own almond leaves. I'm making my own uh, Indian almond leaf extract and using that to make my own uh, Indian almond leaf extract for the tanks because the uh, the one that I bought from uh, Fritz, it was just not enough. It was a small amount and that bottle cost like $9 is for 24 gallons. It doesn't make any sense. That's way too expensive. So what I did was right here, I made my own. Um, I took some almond leaf and I think about, I don't remember how much it was. Maybe it was like six or seven and I boiled it. Um, boiled it, room temperature it, boiled it, cool it, boil it, boiled it over and over. <clears throat> And I made enough of this, and I think I made maybe, I think a half a gallon, and I just put it in this container. And what I'm going to do is take about five mLs and inject it into the tanks, and then see how much the, uh, the pH goes down. Just from early experiments, it definitely works. It works a lot better than the Fritz. Um, I have a spreadsheet that I made uh, so I recorded the, um, I, th I think I started this on the 7th. Um, I recorded the pH. Um, I also bought a new pH meter. Um, I'll post it at the end and how much, it's kind of expensive. I think it was like $150, but it's, it's very, very good, very reliable. It's totally worth it, especially if you're doing Caradina shrimp, um, cause pH is so important, but early testing so far. Um, I definitely see the results from this, uh, this almond leaf, this homemade almond leaf extract that I made. Um, so I'm going to put a couple of things together, run some more experiments and let's see if it actually does reduce the pH. Let's go. Okay. So this is test number one. Um, for this aquarium, I'm going to put the pH probes in. This is the, uh, that measures, uh, that's the pH probe and this probe is for the temperature because you kind of have to do the uh, chemistry with temperature to actually measure pH. Anyway, I tested this tank on, this is a new tank I set up with some old soil. I tested this tank on the seventh and the pH was 6.14. And I put a, a couple of doses of the extract in this. And let's see, that's in the pH meter. Let's see now it's at, 6.7 6.07 uh, 6 so I went down a little bit I only I think I only put like 5 ml in here but as you can see the results it does go down and I think I can probably get it to lower in real time uh, I'm going to try to do this with one hand uh, okay it's actually, it's still calibrating, or not calibrating, it's still calculating. So it's still, it's still dropping down. Now it's at 6.6. .6. Um, all right, so I'm going to add 5 ml. I just drew it up in a syringe. And you can see the, uh, the tannins coming out. I, I use this because that way I can get a, a good visual. It, it works right away. It's, it's insane. Um, it's so much more effective and so much more cost effective than the, uh, the paying for that. Um, the Brightwell or the Fritz is just, is your pain. Like the Indian almond leaves, you can get a bunch of Indian almond leaves for like 10 bucks. You can probably get like a hundred of them and you can just boil it and you know, to, to just let the water cool, just store it away and use it. See, you can see the pH is already dropping. Um, I can probably get this below, easily below um, six. So this meter is better than using the API test kits. It's called the Milwaukee MW102. I got it off Amazon. You can order it directly from Milwaukee and um, it's just more accurate. So I'm going to do this uh, kind of a bi-weekly thing or bi-monthly, twice a month, whatever. Two times a month, maybe, or 
maybe once a month. So that way I can see if my buffering is is going bad, like my soil is going bad. It's far more accurate to use an API. The API that color code doesn't really, you know, it's, it's so subjective, you know. Um, I don't know, it's just really, sometimes it's just really, really hard to tell uh, like exactly what the reading is based on the API color. Um, I'm going to try one other tank right back. All right. And this is the 40 breeder. This, this has a WGF. I think I put maybe about 10 mLs, but this is a much higher volume of water. And you can see the pH on this one is below six. Um, so it definitely works. Now I want to, uh, test the actual, see what the reading is on the extract. And just a quick look at the the probe inside. This is I put the probe inside the extract, and you can see the pH is 4.7, but it, it's dropping. It's not fully. Uh, it hasn't fully reached. I just stuck it in. Um, so basically, it's based on a concentration. Um, I by the way, when you when you make this, make sure you use distilled water. Don't use tap water or anything like that. Um, so I boil it in distilled water, depending on the concentration, the, con the concentration will be de depending on how many leaves you're using. I, I, I guess if I use more leaves, a lot more, say like 20 or so, it will give me a darker tannin, um, which means a higher concentration, which means a much lower pH. So it's kind of like farm in the pharmacy world making ivs compounding like um, oral syringes and things like that it's all based on concentration which is defined by how much water is diluting it the medicine and in this case the medicine is the uh is the uh almond leaf extract extract see now we're down to 6.7 so i assume when this is all said and done it's probably gonna be like 4.5 Again, I, I do prefer this method over using the uh, the bottled products. And because, first of all, I don't know what they're putting in those products. It might just be pure almond leaf extract. But at least I know there's no preservatives or anything in this. This is just the leaves and distilled water boiled. I'm going to continue this experiment. This is actually very, uh, I don't know, it's very, very, like, surprising that it works as well. And it's, and it's very beneficial in the end um, so I'm going to continue to run more tests I have a spreadsheet going I know it's kind of nerdy but I have a spreadsheet I'm documenting everything when I take the pH um, based on the time of day because it does impact pH you know obviously pH drops at night um, when the plants are not photosynthesizing so I'm recording all that and I'm gonna gather all the data and see in the end what I can do better to maintain in a low pH for the long term of this. But um, as I find more information, I'll just create more videos, but continuing the research.